Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's Daf Yomi, which is Shabbos Daf Kuf Yud Ches, or Daf Kuf Yud Zayim and Beis. Three lines from the bottom. It says, "More Tana Rabbanim will learn to the Brai." So, Kam Sudos Chayiv Adam Lechol Shabbos. How many meals? How many Sudos is one obligated to eat on Shabbos? We have a Machlekes. The Tana Kama says, "Shalosh Three Sudos." Rabbi Chitka Aimer Arba. Actually, four Sudos. Amar Rabbi Yechonon Shneiim Mikra Echadoshu. Both opinions are based on the same pasuk. Both of them. Expanded from one pasuk, the pasuk we just had uh, this week in the, in the parsha. Vayoyimah Moshe. This is regarding uh, the man. Moshe says, "Yichlu Hayoyim Idet Today Kishavas Hayoyim," because today is Shabbos. Hayoyim Kishavas Hayoyim Hashem Hayoyim Loisim Tzu Basada. Today, you will not find the man out in the field. So the fact that Moshe is speaking them about eating on Shabbos and he repeats the word Hayoyim three times. This is indicative of the meals, of the amount of times one is meant to eat on Shabbos. Says the Gemara Reb Chitka Savar, he holds Hanit Lasa Hayoyim, these three Hayoyims, Alavar Miurta, aside from the night meal. So one meal takes place the night before, and the three Sudes alluded to here are meant to take place by day. So it's three Sudes by day, in addition to the one that he eats the night before for a total of four Sudas on Shabbos. Rabbanu Sari Bahadi de Urta. These three include the night meal as well. So it gives us a total of three meals on Shabbos. So one at night and two during the day. It says the Gemara, let's bring a right from our Mishnah, whether the correct number is three or four. Tanan, we're going to now Mishnah. Not flood lake, but later Shabbos. If a fire broke out, but later Shabbos. Shabbos at night means Friday night. It says the Mishnah, Matzil and Mazen Gimel Sudas. One can go and salvage the food uh, stuff which equals the amount of three sudas, which he needs for Shabbos. Now, the fact that, that the Mishnah says merely three and not four, this seems to be a riot that only three sudas are actually necessary to be eaten on Shabbos. Says more, my love, oh, we're not speaking about the Lord Yochal. He had not he had eaten any suda at all. He's holding uh, at, the, at the beginning. And he hadn't had eaten any sudas. And the Mishnah tells us how many can he save? Three sudas. Apparently, the correct number is three. So, no, no, he already ate the first Suda, and he only has three remaining, and indeed, he can salvage the, uh, the Mazain, which are needed for the remaining three Sudas. Says the Gemara, okay, let's continue. Shachras, the mission says, if the fire broke out in the morning, Matzil Mazain, Shtei Sudas, then how many Sudas can he save? The amount equal for two Sudas. My love, the Loyacha, we're not speaking about. They had not yet eaten the morning Suda, apparently. How many meals are yet to be eaten? Mishnah says it indicates two. So apparently only two meals, two day meals are to be eaten, unlike Rabbi Chitko maintains, that we learn from the three Hayyayims that there are three day meals. It says, Wallahi, the Achal, he had already eaten his morning meal, and therefore even according to Rabbi Chitka, all he has are two remaining meals. The Mishnah continues, Be'mincha, if the fire fell out when in the afternoon, Be'mincha, Matzil, Mazen, Suda, Achas, one can save the food which is needed for one Suda. My love, I will not speak, Matzil, Loi, Achal. They had not, not, not yet eaten the second day meal. And uh, the Mishnah tells us all he has left is one meal. So it's Moloi, the Achal. He already ate the, um, the first day meal, the, the second day meal. And uh, indeed, all he has left is one more meal, according to Rabbi Chitka. Okay, so the Mishnah is inconclusive. It can go either according to the uh, Rabbanan or Rabbi Chitka. Says the Gemara, let's proceed to the next part of the Mishnah. Since in the Sefer it says, Rabbi Yaisi Yahimer, Lo'ilam Matzila Mazen Shalashudis. Right, Rabbi Yaisi disagrees with Tanakam. He holds, it doesn't depend on the time of day and how many Sudis he personally still needs to eat. Rabbi Yaisi says it's a standard formula. One can save the amount which is needed for three Sudis. This is the Shabbos allotment. So, in contrast with the Tanakama, who says, well, it depends where he's holding, night, morning, afternoon, depending on practically how many he needs, that's how much he can save. Because Rabbi Yaisi, it's a standard formula applied to all, at any time. So this is the difference between Rabbi Yaisi and Tanakama. Mechlal, the Tanakama, Gimel, Suda, really apparently the Tanakama, agrees that it's three Sudas that he needs. There's no discussion regarding the amount of Sudas. It's a question of, is it uh, relative to the situation, or is it standard? But apparently all agree that the amount is three sudas. Unlike Rabbi Chitka. 
Ella says the more rather machvarta. It seems clear that Masnis and Loikir of Chitka, indeed our mission is not follow Chitka's opinion, but rather the Rabbana's opinion that the total suda is for Shabbos Atri. Let's take a look at Rashi inside. Up on the uh, top, on the first line, says Rashi, matzil This is Rabbi Yeshi speaking. The fact that he only says three doesn't say four, less later Rabbi Yechitka. Apparently he doesn't hold like Rabbi Yechitka. So Rabbi Yechitka certainly doesn't hold like Rabbi Yechitka. Miklal, the Tanakama also shalosh suda severely. Apparently the Tanakama agrees that it is three sudas that are needed on Shabbos. Why? The Baha'i lo yifligu. In this uh, point, there's no dispute. Ela the Tanakama savar mashavar kvar lo yatzel. The only thing that they're disagreeing about is the Tanakama maintains that whatever he passed, whatever he, he doesn't need any longer, he cannot save. Rabbi Yatzel, Rabbi Yatzel holds that he can still save the equal amount of three sudas. So, it doesn't appear to be any discussion regarding the number of sudas required. The question of, is it relative to his situation, or is it something standard applied to all? But apparently all agree that the total of sudas for Shabbos are three, and indeed the Gemara concludes, our Mishnah reflects the Shita of the uh, Tanakama and not Rabbi Chitke. Let's move on to the next right. Says Gemara Bahad Now, how are we going to explain the Mishnah and Peya, which says, Mi mazen sudas. If a poor man has, has with him food for two sudas, so that's a, a day's worth of food, lo yito He should not take from the, um, the Tamchoy, this communal uh, bowl, dish that's uh, passed around amongst the uh, homeowners where they collect actual food on a daily basis. They collect and distribute on a daily, daily basis for the poor people. So he shouldn't take from that because he has enough for today. He has no right to take from the Tamchoy. What if he has much more than that? Mazo in Arab He has food for 14 meals. In that case, he has a full week's worth. Lo yitum na kupa. He cannot even take from the kupa, which Rashi says was a um, was money, was was a fund collected on a weekly basis. So he shouldn't take from the kupa because he doesn't need for this week. He has enough food for this week. The fact that the mission speaks about fourteen suudays, which are sufficient for a week, a week's worth of, of food. Who who does this mission follow? Mani loy rabbanon v'loy we have some difficulty because this Mishnah tells us that for seven days, including Shabbos, 14 meals are enough. This Mishnah, it, whose shita does it reflect? Lo Rabbanon. But the Rabbi why? can go neither like the Rabbanon nor Rabbi Chitka. Why? I Rabbanon, because according to the Rabbanon, Chamei Sri Havin, there are 15 meals which are required for a, a week. Why? Because according to the Rabbanon, surely the weekdays only need two meals a day. They eat only two meals a day. One, uh, one by day, one at night. So two meals a day for the six weekdays. But for Shabbos, certainly he needs an extra meal, which is a total of 15 for the week. If this Mishnah reflects from Chitka Shita, then we need actually another one. There are 16 meals in a week. Why? Because the six weekdays need two each for a total of 12. Shabbos needs four Sudas for a total of 16. Let's take a look at Rashi inside. Rashi is four lines from the top, beginning with the word Tamchoy Korok Doilo, a large, a large bowl, a large plate. The Goivim Bogaboim Machol Bimbalibatim. And these uh, people in charge, they collect the food from the Balibatim, Machal Kalanim, base Sudas Liyai. So they distribute two Sudas per day, Miyam Liyai, on a daily basis. So this fellow who has two meals worth with him, Layital, he shouldn't take from this car, this Tamchoy. Since he has, he has sufficient supply for today. So in effect, he is stealing from the other anim, he's taking their part. Continues the, the Rashi Kupa. This is the Mois, this is the uh, fund. Mois and Lefarnes Anim Bnei Toivim, which is collected to be in Farnes to supply the anim, poor people which come from uh, respectable families, that they're embarrassed. The Zilu Milsa is degrading for them. The tamchoy, this tamchoy, this tamchoy thing is degrading for them. And they get from the kupa this uh, this fund which is collected. And the money of this kupa is distributed on every era of Shabbos. So it's a weekly distribution. So if this fellow has 14 sudais worth, you dollar sudais, lo yito kupa. You shouldn't take from that fund. 
So you can't take from this pushka because he can wait for the, for the next hour of Shabbos. He has a full week's worth. But if he has 13, he can go ahead and take. Why? Because there won't be any more distribution until our Shabbos comes and he'll have run out of his supply. For the seven days of the week, he needs 14 sudas. So if he has less than that, he only has 13, then he has a right to take from the kupa. So the Gemara asked the cash from this Mishnah. This Mishnah seems difficult according to both shittis, because according to the Chachamim, one needs 15 meals for a week. According to Yechitka, he needs actually 16. Says the Gemara, on the 12th line, from the top, says the Gemara, Lo'olam Rabbanon. This Mishnah, indeed, is following the Rabbanon Shita. Now, although they require an extra meal for Shabbos, but we can rearrange his uh, meals, so that he has sufficient, even with 14. How? Because they tell him, My Deboi Slamechal, Bapuki Shabbato, what you uh, intended on eating on Matzah Shabbos, the night meal that you reserve for Moitzoi Shabbos at night, Achli B'Shabbato. Simple. Go advance and eat it on Shabbos as your third Shabbos meal. Eat it for Yisru the Shlishes. Don't eat it at night. Eat it before nightfall. This way, you're going to have your third Shabbos meal. So if so, even 40 meals are sufficient to supply him for the full week. Says him, okay, if so, Lema, should we say Rabbana Yivalei Reb Chitka? That indeed this mission reflects Rabbana, not, not Reb Chitka. Because according to Reb Chitka, you need an additional meal. Says him, no, I feel the time Reb Chitka, even if this Mishnah is reflecting Reb Chitka, it will work out. Why? Because they rearrange his meals even further. <laughs> they don't mean because they tell him, but the boy is Lamechal. The Mali Shabbat, the meal that you intend on eating on Arab Shabbos by day, Achlelu Urta. Eat it at night. Wait until Shabbos arrives. Eat it after nightfall. Let that be your first Shabbos meal. Right? Now the two meals which you intended eating on Shabbos, eat them, eat them uh, by Sh- Shabbos by day. The, um, the, the fourth Shabbos meal, that's going to be the meal that we just discussed, the Matzoi Shabbos meal. He advances it. He eats it earlier. This gives him a total of three, uh, four meals on Shabbos. Says him, one second. So the on Arab Shabbos, he doesn't eat anything. He waits until nightfall. He, he sits and fasts all day because you're compelling him to take the daytime Shab- Arab Shabbos meal, the Friday meal, and wait and eat it until Shabbos comes. Doesn't matter how could that be? The Kuliyoyim of the Malashabta, the entire day Arab Shabbos, but Tanisim was Svinulei. They have him sit in a Tanis, have him fast. That's not, that doesn't make sense. Ella says the Gemara, you know what? You're right. Ha'mani Rabbi Kivi, this Mishnah. Reflects the opinion of Rabbi Kiva, who made the following statement: The Omar who said, "Asay Shabbos Chochel, make your Shabbos like a weekday, with regard to food and drink. Resort to to the minimum when it comes to food and drink. If you can't afford more of al tzarech lebris, as long as you don't you don't make yourself dependent on 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 the public on the bris, don't go ahead and and rely on handouts." So therefore, although generally speaking, one needs three sudas, needs four sudas on Shabbos, but this fellow doesn't have the ability to provide the full amount of sudas on Shabbos. For instance, we're stuck with shorter meal. It still doesn't justify him collecting from the tzedakah because a person is meant to resort to the minimum. So that to, to, to um, spare him from, from handouts, from being dependent on other people. Continues the Gemara, Now what about the Mishnah which says, So there's an Ani who's passing through, he's not, uh, he's not sleeping over. So how much do they give him? What is the minimum? They can't give less to this Ani who's over Makam or Makam. They have to give him the amount which is sufficient for one day, for two meals, for today. So they give him a kicker, uh, at least a kicker, a, a loaf of bread. What size kicker? Which is sufficient for two meals. The Gemara describes it as a kikur of a punyon, a kikur which is valued, which costs a punyon, which is actually a twelfth of a of a dinner, and is in a cellar that's four dinner. So a, a punyon, punyon is a forty eighth of a cellar. So that's how much this loaf of bread costs. That's the value. Now, uh, <laughs> how expensive is bread? How expensive is flour? Says the Mishnah. The other side of the equation is midalitz in. 
when four sa'a worth of flour, besela, goes for a sela. Now as Rashi um, calculates this for us, so the, um, based on the Gemara and Erevin, that the, the uh, size of, the, of this loaf will be a quarter of a kav. And this is sufficient for two meals. So this is a day's worth of food. This is what they give him. Lon, now if he sleeps over, no sleep, no saslina, they give him the, uh, the um, lodging needs. They supply him with whatever he needs for lodging. Vim Shavas, if he stays over Shavas, no sleep, no sleep, Then they give him food for three meals for Shavas. Says more lame, Rabbanon, he will hear Should we say this Mishnah is Rabbanon, not Rabchitka, because the Mishnah speaks about three suits, not four? Says more lame, Rabchitka. This Mishnah could be following Rabchitka as well. How is he going to have enough of three meals? Could go in, for instance, the Ika Suda Bahade. Because when he came along, when he came over here and he arrived, he had a Suda with him. He brought along a Suda with him. As we're going to say, see later that the, um, that the townspeople from the, uh, the former, the, the, the earlier town which he visited, they, they would ensure that he takes along some Tzedel Adarach, some food for the road. So, whatever the case is, he came along with some food. He has a Suda worth of food with him right now. So very simple, the Amrilin lady, they tell him, This meal that you have with you, eat that. And that will be your fourth Shabbos meal. So although they merely given three, but they add on the one that he already has in his possession for a total of four. Says the Gemara, one second, he's going fully depleted. When he's going to leave, he's going to be fully empty and depleted of all his supplies. How can you uh, compel a person to do that? Says the Malvina lay Suda Indeed, they are Malava him Masuda, meaning they, they give Masuda to accompany him to take along with him when he leaves. So we're not discussing that Suda that they're actually going to give him on his way out. So indeed the Gemara says that this Mishnah could be working according to Khitka as well, although the Mishnah speaks about three Sudas, we add on the one that he had with him. Of course, they're going to give him additional Suda when he leaves town. Says the Gemara, the, the um, we, we mentioned that if he's lon, if he sleeps over, they give him Parnosas Lina. My, what is that? My Parnosas Lina. They already gave him the food that he needs. What does it mean, Parnosas Lina? Amra um, Papa actually means just uh, they give him a bed, Puria, a bed, and the, um, uh, the, uh, a pillow, whatever he needs to sleep on. So that's what it means. It's not referring to food, but rather the, uh, the lodging supplies, like a bed, etc. So in summary, we had a machlekes regarding the amount, the number of Sudais Shabbos that one is obligated to eat on Shabbos, according to Rabbanan, three Sudais, according to Rabbanan, four Sudais. Rabbi Yechon explained that both are based on the same Pasuk regarding eating of the man on Shabbos. Moshe Rabbeinu speaks about Hayoyim, he repeats it three times, eat it today because today is Shabbos. The word Hayoyim denotes that there are three meal times on Shabbos, three Sudais. According to the Chamim, that gives us a total of three, including the nighttime meal, according to Rabbanan, the Pasuk is speaking about the three Sudas of Hayyim of the day, in addition to the meal eaten the night before, for a total of four Sudas. We had a riot from three Mishnas, which seemed to favor the Rabbanon's approach. We had a riot from our Mishnah regarding saving the um, food supply from a fire. The Mishnah speaks strictly about three Sudas, and the more concluded indeed the Mishnah by us is in accordance with the Shittas Rabbanon regarding the Mishnah of Peah. So first we began with a Mishnah describing 14 Sudas per week. And the, uh, the Gemara suggested that indeed this Mishnah reflects the Rabbanon. The Gemara concluded that it could even be working in of Chitka. And uh, we're following the opinion of Rabbi Kiva, who maintains that one should conduct himself I- I- with bare minimum. He should suffice with the bare minimum as long as he doesn't uh, resort to handouts. So that's the situation there. He's an Ani. And even though he doesn't have the proper requirement of Shabbos Sudois, that whatever he has is sufficient and precludes his taking from the Kupa Shotzdaka. We had the, um, we quoted from the Mishnah regarding uh, what we supply, what we give the Ani. When it comes to town, the Mishnah spoke about giving him three Sudois worth, which appears like the Shittas Rabbana. The Gemara concluded that even according to Abchitke, it would work because he has a Sudo with him. And that's the one he's going to add on to the three that we give him. And as the Gemara concluded, when he leaves town, certainly we're going to give him another Suda for accompaniment. Says the Gemara, Tan Rabbanon, Ka'arais Sha'acha Ben Arvis, when speaking about washing dishes on Shabbos. So Ka'arais, these, these plates, which he used for his Arvis for the evening meal, 
Madichan, Lechel ben Shachris. He can rinse them. He can wash his dishes. In order to prepare them for the morning meal. Shachris, the uh, place that he ate, used for the morning meal. Madichan, he can rinse them. Lechel ben Tzorayim, to use them for the midday meal. But Tzorayim, the dishes that he used for the midday meal. Madichan, Lechel ben Bemechanah. Mincha, he can wash them. In order to use them by his Mincha meal, afternoon meal. But after Mincha time, he's no longer planning on having a meal and using these plates. He can no longer rinse those plates, as she says, because this Hadoch ain't Hadoch Azu, he's preparing for weekdays. And therefore, it is not allowed. Aval says the price of cups, Viketonis, pitchers, Sloiches, containers, which contain uh, liquid. These are uh, liquid related dishes. These things. He can rinse them the entire day. As long as there's a chance he's going to use them. Because there's no, there's no standard, there's no regimen, there's no schedule when it comes to drinking. As opposed to a meal, which is pre-scheduled. And uh, it is known that he's no longer going to eat today. But drinking, that's something unknown, unpredictable. And therefore, he can rinse the, uh, the um, liquid associated dishes. Because it's considered to be Tzorach of today of Shabbos. One who fulfills the midst of the obligation of three Sudas on Shabbos, he will be spared from three misfortunes. Three Puranias. From the um, difficulties associated with the coming of Mashiach. Rashi actually gives us three translations to Chevli. Chevli can either mean the lot, the portion, meaning the, the era. What's going to happen during Mashiach's arrival? Chevli can mean the fear associated with Mashiach's coming. And finally, as Rashi by us says, Chevli is Lashon Chevli Yoleda, the uh, birth pains. So the, uh, the Chevli Mashiach is referring to the birth pains during the time, the era of Mashiach, because the world is, is giving birth to new, uh, a new world order, a new, a new phenomenon, a new world. So the Tsarist, the Puran is associated with that. He will be spared from it on account of his eating the three suits of Shabbos. So that's number one. Number two is going to be spared um, in Shal Gehenim. And number three, um, this major war that also will be associated with, uh, with Puranis and he'll be saved from that misfortune. Says the how do we know this? He's going to be spared from that because by us, by the uh, Pasuk describing the Milan Shabbos, what does it say? Right? It says three times Yoyim. And elsewhere, regarding the coming of Mashiach, what does it say? Hashem says, I'm going to send for you, I'm going to send you, before the boy Yoy Mashem, is describing the time of Mashiach. And a person who, uh, who is involved in Sudha Shabbos, he will be spared from the um, difficulties associated with that period. Mashiach points out that the word Yoyim, daylight, which comes after the darkness of night, this indicates indicates uh, clarity and, and uh, free from darkness and from uh, Puranis from misfortune. So this is number one. Number two is going to be spared Medina Shal Gehinam from the judgment of Gehenim Ksivacha Yoim because here by, by the suit of Shabbos it says Yoim Ksivacha and elsewhere it says regarding Gehenim Yoim Evra Hayayim Ahu so it's referring to the Din of Gehenim. The third thing that is going to be spared from is Muhammad's Goy Gumagoy, Ksivacha Yoim, here it says Yoim, Ksivasam. And regarding the Muhammad Goy Gumagoy, this major war it says, Bayoim Ba Goy. So we have Xerah Shava, that the Yoim associated with Sudha Shabbos will spare him from the, um, the Yoim of Goy Gumagoy. Mashal explains why specifically these three things he will be spared from. So he says, because these things, these three things, Prepare a person for the ultimate rest, the ultimate manucha, the eternal manucha, eternal rest, and one who is very much uh, connected, committed to the uh, concept of Shabbos, the Sudas of Shabbos, the, the resting of Shabbos, the manucha of, of the spiritual resting of Shabbos. He's already arrived at that spiritual realm of the manucha. He doesn't need to undergo this whole process in order to arrive at that destination. Therefore, he is spared from the difficulty associated with that eternal manucha. Continues the Gemara, Om Rabbi Yochanan, Mishra Rabbi Yossi, Kol Shabbos, one who pleasures the Shabbos, he delights the Shabbos, he um, engages in, in physical pleasures on Shabbos. Noisnoi nachlobli metzorim, 
they grant him as a reward a nachla inheritance without any boundaries, limitless. Shanemar oz tis anagal Hashem. Then you're going to delight with Hashem. I will ride you up on the, put you astride on the heights of the, uh, of the earth. And I will feed you. I will give you nachlas Yaakov Avicha, the inheritance of Yaakov, your father. And was going to say that that's an unlimited inheritance. Says the Masha, why? Why specifically an unlimited nachla for being Ma'anak at Shabbos? He says because Shabbos is Me'in Olam Haba, a person who engages in, in physical pleasures, eating, drinking, etc., for the sake of Shabbos, for, for, to engage in, in the, um, to, to uh, take part in the spiritual delight of Shabbos. He's elevating all his, uh, his physical pleasures and using it uh, within the context of Shabbos. He's, he's spiritualizing the world. He's spiritualizing his, his, uh, his activities. He's in a, a state of, of, of spirituality, bleak vol, which is limitless, unlimited. Therefore, he's zeicha to this uh, unlimited nachla, and the Gemara tells us specifically, the Pasuk is referring to the Nachlas Yaakov Avicha, which is unlimited. Like Avram, unlike Avram, where it says, Kum Hashem tells him, get up and take a walk, Ba'aretz, walk around the, um, the land, La'arka, to its length, Rachba, and to its width. So, it's limited. Only this, this land. But like Yitzchak, unlike by Yitzchak, Shekosaboy, where it says, so by Yitzchak it says, to you and for you and your children, I will give. I will give the, all these lands. So again, it's limited, these lands. Hello, rather, Kiyakov, Shekosaboy. By Yaakov it says, a Farazza, you will break out, spread out, Yoma, Vakedma, Tzavayna, Venegba, all directions to west, Vakedma, east, Tzavayna, Venegba, north and south, in all directions, his Nachla is unlimited. Continues the Gemara. Nachem Yitzchak Omer Nitzel Meshubit Goli is one who engages in the three meals of Shabbos. This is a recurring theme in the Gemara. One who's careful with three meals of Shabbos. Apparently, it was difficult. Perhaps we're speaking in the yeah, in the winter time, in the short afternoon. So the the third suit of Shabbos comes a little bit of difficulty. A person is meant to be careful. The Gemara is inspiring us to be careful properly with the three suits of Shabbos. If one adheres. To the uh, to this requirement, and he fulfills the three sudos. He is nitzel saved, spared meshubed golius from the subver- servants of the exiles. He's not meshubed to the gol- to the goyim to the golius. So regarding the uh, person who delights fully delights in the uh, delight of Shabbos, we had the pasuk which says, "I will put you astray. I'll ride you up." And elsewhere it says regarding the nations, the Goyim, the Goliaths of Atta, Abba Mesemwe, Sidraich, he will step on their heights, meaning he will not be under their jurisdiction and control. I'm speaking about the Goliaths, the powers that are present during, during Goliaths. Omar Vidom Rab, Kolam Argus Hashabas, one who delights Shabbos, Noisnoi Mishalis Liboy, they give him the desires of his heart. Shanemar, as it says in the Pasuk in Tehillim, Vis Anagal Hashem, you should. Uh, Pleasure yourself with Hashem. Hashem will give you in return the desires of your heart. Now, we don't know exactly what Vesanik is referring to. This pleasure, this is the light that he's engaged in. What is it referring to? I don't know what, what it is. Which, what type of Oinik? When the Pasuk elsewhere says you should call out to Shabbos, establish Shabbos as a day of Oinik of pleasure. Have you Oimer? So based on this, I say that the Pasuk here as well, which says, V'sanagal Hashem, what type of Oinig is referring to? Is the Oinig Shabbos? It's referring to the Oinig Shabbos. And what is the reward? The Yitan Lecham Mishal, Hashem will give you the desires of your heart. Masha points out that the Pasuk is telling him, don't worry about spending all that money for Shabbos. Hashem will repay you in full. As we know that the, uh, the allotment, which is allotted per person, per year, for all his expenditures, all the, the mezoines, the, the food of it, that a person needs, that is allotted for him from, uh, from the uh, beginning of the year, but that doesn't include, included in that allotment is not the Shabbos expenditures and Yantav expenditures and actually what he spends to, uh, to educate his, uh, his bun of the Talmud Torah, tuition, school tuition. So that's not included in the yearly allotment. So the Pasuk is telling Hashem, will repay you because the money you spend for Shabbos will be returned to you. Continues the Gemara. Okay, so we spoke about delighting Shabbos. With what should he delight Shabbos? What is an example? Rabbi Yudah Beit of Shmo Bar Shilas Mishmei the Rav Amar. So he says as follows. Betav Shoshat and a dish made from beets. Rashi says it was Choshev. 
So all they, they, he describes the various dishes which were deemed um, elegant and, and chashev in, in his time. So betav a, 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 a dish made of beets, v'dogim g'doylem, large fish, rashi shumen, cloves of, of garlic. So these are examples of delights of Shabbos. Rav Chibar Ashi, Omar Rav. Yeah, if a person can, can handle it, if a person has the ability to, um, to procure elegant foods, very nice. But even if a person doesn't have that ability, at a minimum, he should see to be Ma'anik Shabbos with at least something small. Afilu Dvar Mut, will Chavit Shabbos Asoy? Even if he made a small thing, something minimal, for the sake of Kavit Shabbos, Harezeh Oynik. This also is regarded as Oynik, he has fulfilled his obligation of Oynik. So he doesn't need necessarily to go ahead and uh, procure all those things if he can't, if he can't handle it, if he can't afford it. So even if he could only go ahead and make something small to cover Shabbos, that also is regarded as Oynik Shabbos. Mayhi, well, what are we speaking about? What is this Dover Mot, the small thing? What's an example? On Rav Papa, Kasa the Harsana. Kasa the Harsana, she says, a small fish which are fried in their, in their fats and with flour. So this is something small, but if he did it to cover Shabbos, he's fulfilling, he too, is fulfilling the obligation of Anik Shabbos because he's doing the best uh, of, of his ability. Continues the Gemara. Omar Rav Chia Bar Abba Rav Yechman Kalam HaShabbos Shabbos Kalchasei One who observes Shabbos properly Afilu Eved Aved Zorah Kedar Enosh Even if he is Eved Aved Zorah he worshipped Aved Zorah like the Dor of Enosh Rashi explains that the Dor of Enosh Enosh was the son of Adam Rishon that's when the whole concept of Aved Zorah began so if he was Ovid Ovid of the Zara, Moichel Loi, they are Moichel him, he's coming to the Tshuva, and they are Moichel him, on account of Shmir Shabbos, Shenemar Ashrei Enosh Yasa Zois, and it says, Kol Hashem Shabbos Meichal Loi. So the Pasuk here is, uh, is referencing Enosh, right, which is the day that began uh, their Avid Zara. And the pastor says, Shem Yishas Mechalai, from desecrating it, Altikrei Mechalai, instead of reading Mechalai, Elo Mochololoi, it is forgiven for him, to him. So on account of Shmir Shabbos Kilchasai, we are, he attests to Hashem's omnipresence and absolute uh, rule of the world and, and control of the world, and the creation of the world, and recreate, constant recreation of the world. By doing so, he's undoing the, the avoid desire, the idol worship that he was engaged in, and indeed, as a result of that, they atone for the Avera of Avodah Zara. So we learned regarding the significance of uh, one who is Mekayim the Shabbos. We said that one who is Mekayim the three Sudais, he is spared from three misfortunes, Mechavli Mashiach, then of Gehenim, and Mechavli Mashiach, we learned that one who is Ma'anei Gesa Shabbos, who engages in delighting the Shabbos and pleasuring on Shabbos, he is Zaychat HaNach Lubli Mitzorim, unlimited inheritance, he is spared from the Shibud Goliois, Subservience to the uh, to the exile to the to the goyim in Gaulus, and they grant him mishalis liboy the desires of his heart. We learned that one who's mishabes shabbos kol chasay, he is nimchal even on the chet of avodah zara which he had committed. Continues the Gemara Omar of Yehuda Maravel Mali Shomri Yisrael Shabbos Rishona. If only Klal Yisrael would have kept observed properly the first Shabbos that they were uh, that they, when they were given the first Shabbos. No nation, Russian language or culture would have had control over them. This was the first Shabbos. What happened? So from the um uh, from the um from the nation of Klai Yisrael, this is Dustin Barbira, they went out to gather the mon. They were Machal Shabbos, whether they took whether they took the uh they came them out with them to collect them on, whether they actually carried them on. Whatever it is they did, some they weren't, they weren't supposed to do, they were Mechal Shabbos. Uksib Basrei, and what does it say afterwards? Vayove Amalek. Amalek came along, and he was the first one who came and attacked. And we see that it resulted from a lack of adherence to Shabbos. So had they have kept the first Shabbos properly, they would have been spirit. Even today, if only Klal Yisrael would observe two Shabboses properly, Kilchasan Miyad Negolim, immediately they would be redeemed from Golas. Shanemar, as it says, Koyomar Hashem, La Sarisim Asher Yishmur Shabsoisai, 
Uksiv Basrei, so they will observe my Shabbos, and Shabbosay Sai is a plural lashon indicating that if they keep two Shabbosays properly, what does it say? Uksiv Basrei, Vavi Yosem al Harkachi, I'll bring them to Harkachi, I'll bring the Gula. Om Rabbi Yosi, Yehei Chelki, my portion should be, I wish, that I would be one of those Ma'oichle Shalish Sudaf Shabbos. For those who eat three Sudas and Shabbos. And Mashal points out there's going to be a whole list of these types of statements of Yehi Chalki, if only my portion would be. And Mashal says that Rabbi Yitzhi was just simply trying to point out, um, relate to different practices which were not really adhered to properly amongst the general population. It needed Chizik. So he was coming to inspire them. He says, I wish my lot, my portion should be amongst those who observe this and this and that and that. Indicating that one, one should seek, pursue uh, the, uh, the uh, fulfillment of these things. And he meant to inspire the public by making these statements. So the first one on the list was, My portion should be My portion should be from those who complete reciting the halal on a daily basis. Says the Gemara, is, uh, is that a good thing? Is that favorable of any? Is that so? We've learned that Koyre Halal B'chol Yom, one who recites Halal on a daily basis, he's, he's degrading the value of Halal, which is meant to be recited on a, on a special day. So he goes and recites it every day, it's like a, like a song. Harizan Machar from the Gadif. He is, uh, it's like he's um, denigrating and, and blaspheming. He's, like, he's belittling the, the Halal. So why does Rabbi Yishi praise his fellow who recites the halal on a daily basis? Says the Gemara, we're not speaking about the entire halal. Kikam Rinan, Pesukah the Zimra, we're speaking merely about the um, those chapters in Pesukah the Zimra on a daily basis. We say Halalu as Hashem and Hashemayim, Halalu Kel Bekachay. He's speaking about the halals included in the standard field. Let's take a look at Rashi. Rashi here is seven lines from the top. Beginning with the words Hareza Machara from Megadeth. Why? What's so bad? Shanavim or So this fellow who reads Hal every day, he's blaspheming the Halal. He's cursing it, he's degrading it. Shanavim or Rishonim. The early the early Navim Tiknu Laima Reprakim. They were Masak and they established that on a uh, from time to time one is meant to say Halal the Shabbat Voida to pray as it prays and thanksgiving to Hashem One, this guy reads it on a daily basis constantly not in its appropriate time and the other Kamizamashir he's merely like uh, singing a song of Slaitz and he's mocking making fun of the halal like Mar says we're not speaking about the actual halal rather Psukha the Zimra two Mizmarim two chapters of of, uh, of praising Hashem Halal is Hashem and Hashemayim Halu Kel so apparently Rabbi Yossi, in Rabbi Yossi's times already there was, a, uh, this, there was a, um, a, uh, there was a need to inspire the oil of the population regarding adhering to saying Pesukah the Zimra properly. Continues Gemara, Oh Rabbi Yossi, Yechelki, my portion should be in Mespalulim, Imdim Dume Chama, from those who daven with the redness of the sun. What does that mean? So Ash explains that the, the sun, when it rises in the morning, it's red, when it's going to set, it is also read. So one is meant to daven. Shachar is right at the, at the commencement of the day, right at the, the beginning when the sun is red, when the sun rises. Begin your day with davening and end your day prior to sunset with Tefillah Samencha. Says the Gemara, Omar Rav Chia Ba'aba Rav Yechon, Mitzvah L'Spal Dum Nechama. There is a mitzvah to daven with the redness of the sun. Omar Rav Chia What is it? The Pasuk. That we learned this from Yeruchem Shamesh. They will fear you with the sun, meaning they will daven with the sun rising. And prior to the moon coming out, meaning prior to sunset, for generations and generations. So this is referring to the tefillis that are meant to take place, shacharis, right in the morning, and mincha prior to sunset. Let's take a look at Rashi. So this is Rashi right after the Rashi we just saw, Pesukah the Zimra. So Rashi says, beginning with the words Dimdume Chama, says Rashi Kishi Aduma, when the sun is red, Shachris in the morning, Achri Hanatsam Yad, right after the, um, the sun begins to rise, He Aduma, it is red. Va'aris, in the evening, Samach Shkiyasa, close to Shkia, Im Shamesh, Im Zrichasa, with the rising of the sun, with Nehorech, Koydim Arayrech, prior to the, the light of the moon emerging, Boyd Hashemesh, Leshaka, 
as, um, as long as the sun has not yet set. Continues the Gemara. My portion should be those that die due to a stomach ailment, stomach sickness. Most of the righteous people they die as a result of stomach or intestinal sickness. So Ashi points out that the, this chayli is, it brings about Yisurim to a person and it cleanses a person from his Averis. Let's take a look at Taisus actually. Taisus on the right side, up on top, the first line, Rubim shal tzaddikim meisim b'choyli me'ayim. So Taisus brings first Rashi, Pirish Bekuntris, this is Rashi, L'mark of an Esem, to cleanse them of their sins. Viri Oimer, Ki yesh medrash, there's a medrash which says that the purpose here is L'mark achila mina ma'ayim. To cleanse the, the stomach, the, the intestinal element is meant to cleanse them from the achila, the achila of the uh, from the mi'ayim v'yis nekim u'tohirin k'machashores, so that it will leave them clean and pure, like the malach hashores, to cleanse them of any uh, food that they ate perhaps inappropriately, so or slightly inappropriate, not l'shem shemayim, whatever it is that they need an atonement for, so the choyli mi'ayim cleanses them. Of that experience, and then it results. They result in being in the key mutahirim kamalach hashorts. Continues the Gemara of Amar Biyasi, Yechal ki mimeisim mitzvah derech mitzvah. My chelik should be from those who die on the way to doing a mitzvah. Amar Biyasi, Yechal ki machnisim shamesh betzveria. My portion should be from those who bring in Shabbos where in Tveria. So Rashi explains that Tveria was uh, was in a valley, and. It gets dark quicker in a valley because the sun, uh, the rays of the sun disappear quicker. So he says we should go be Makavah Shabbos early like the ones in Tveria. And I should be from those that, that take leave of Shabbos in Tzipayri, which was actually situated on top of a mountain, which the sun would linger, the rays would linger longer. And there Shabbos ended later. So this is the appropriate way to approach Shabbos, bring it on early and conclude late. My chelik should be, my portion should be from those that are in charge of bringing together the people and then putting them, seating, seating them in the Beis Medrash. So bringing them to learn. I don't want to have a part in those from those who are in charge of getting everybody up, announcing, meal time has come, get up, stop learning. I want to be from the former, not from the latter. My chelik should be from those who are in charge of collecting tzedakah. But let me machalkit stucker. But not from those that are in charge of distributing the stucker, which requires a high level of integrity. You must be um, very honest and fully uh, objective when it comes to distributing the stucker so that your heart is not swayed one way or another to favor a relative, for instance. So therefore, I prefer being from the collectors and not from the distributors. My portion should be from those that are are suspected of doing wrongdoing, the aim boy. One who is suspected, the aim boy, it's not within a meaning, he's fully, fully innocent. This gives a person a kapara due to the, the shame, the embarrassment. Indeed, that took place by me. I was suspected of wrongdoing, and I was actually free, innocent of any wrongdoing. I did five times, Tashmish, Vinotati, and as a result, I actually planted Chamisha Arozim Bisrael, five cedars, five uh, great Sadiq and great Chachamim in Kal Yisrael, which resulted from those five times of Tashmish. Uman Inan, who are those five? Rabbi Shmuel Rabbi Yaisi, Rabbi Lezer Rabbi Yaisi, so all these are Rabbi Yaisi's sons, Rabbi Chalaft of Rabbi Yaisi, Rabbi Aftilas of Rabbi Yaisi, Rabbi Nachim Rabbi Yaisi, so these total five. Says the Rabbi Ikevar Dimus, when I'm Tevar Dimus, who was also a son of Yaisi, this is number six. Says the actually, he's already included in the list. Hainu Vardimois, Hainu Menachem. So Menachem and, uh, and Vardimois are one and the same person. Vamai Kurdi Vardimois, why was he called Vardimas? Shepana Vadoimen Leveret. Because his face, his countenance, resemble the beauty of a, of a rose. So Vardimas is uh, indicating that his, that his face is Doimen Leveret to a rose. Says the Gemara. Lemeimra, do you mean to say the Rabbi Yisim mitzvah as oyna loikim? He says he only engaged five times in Tashish to bring about the um, 
the birth of these five five sons. No more. He didn't do uh, mitzvahs oina. He didn't engage in tashmish for mitzvahs oina, even not for the sake of having the child. How could that be? It's a mitzvah. Mitzvah say. Says my Ella rather Ema Chomish Bilis Balti V'Shanisi. These five uh, uh, times were unique. That he did it twice. He repeated the Tashmish Taish. But Balti V'Shanisi. He repeated a second time immediately afterwards. Why? As Rashi explains, when a person does that, it increases the chance of uh, of uh, his wife conceiving a boy. So we're basically saying he exerted that effort, that additional Hishtadlis to have a Zachar indeed. He was yaitzah to have five. He was to have five sons who were great tzaddik and great chacham. On Rabbi Yosi, miyamai loy karisi ishti, and all my days loy karisi ishti ishti. I never referred to my wife as my wife. Vilu shayri, and to my ox I never referred to it as shayri my ox. Ella rather. Li ishti basi I referred to my wife as my home. Ulu shayri, and had I referred to my ox sadi, my field. What is a name? A name describes the essence of the, of the, of the thing, of the person. So basically here is telling us that the true essence, the true, the true role of, of one's wife is to, to, to tend to the home. So therefore I refer to her as my home. That's a true description. That's a true essence. That's her true name. Likewise, when it comes to the shur, the point of the ox is not just to roam freely. It's, it's to, to provide service, to, uh, to serve. Uh, to serve people, specifically to serve a uh, year, the Bishvil Yisrael, the whole world is created for us. So, Rabbi is indicating that, yeah, the Shur, instead of referring to her as merely an animal, a Shur, Sadi, his role, his job is to tend to my field, to, to serve. That's why he referred to it as Sadi. On Rabbi Yaisi, Miyamai, all my days, when I stakal I never gazed at my, at my Brismila. As a as a um Ashis Miroy Tsnias, expression of Tsnias. Says Umar Aini. Is that the case of Bioisi? He had this this, uh, this, uh, this custom? Is that true? For Amrle the Rebbe. They told Rabbi, they asked Rabbi the following question. My time Kurlach Rabbeinu Kalish. Why did they call you Rabbeinu Kalish? Right, we know Rabbi who was Rubid Anasi, he was referred to as Rabbeinu Kalish. So they asked him, Why? Why is that your title? Amr <laughs> Lusi told him, I'll tell you why. Miyamai. Because all my days I didn't gaze at my bismillah. So apparently, when one engages in this type of behavior, uh, uh, refrains uh, from looking at the bris, he's engaged in a high level of tzniyas. He deserves the title of Kaddish, Rabbeinu Kaddish. So likewise, Rabbi Yaisi had this uh, custom as well. Why was he not referred to as Rabbi Yaisi Kaddish? Says the Gemara, Rebbe ha- actually had an additional advantage. But Rebbe, Milsa Achritahabe, he had something else as well. What was that? He, uh, he didn't place his hand under his clothing, underneath, underneath the, the belt area. So this was an additional, additional anhaga uh, um, uh, of Tznias, of Kedusha. And therefore he merited the term Rabbeinu HaKadosh. Unlike Rabbi Yaisi, who was not given this additional title. Basically, the kairos meaning the beams of his of his home, the um, the ceiling. They never saw, they never witnessed. Imre chaluki, the seams, the inner seams on the inside of my chaluk of my of my robe. Rashi explains he would get into bed, he would, he would uh, hide under the under the sheet, cover himself with a sheet, and then lift the the chaluk by way of the uh, of his head. So he simply lifted off his body. He never actually turned it inside out. So the um, the, the ceiling, never actually witnessed, never saw, never noticed the inside, the, the seams inside his chaluk. So this was an expression of a great sneers. I never, in all my days, I never was ever transgressed on the words of my friends. For example, I know about myself that I'm not a coin. Still, if my friends would tell me, instruct me, go up to the duchen, to the uh, stage over there where they can him, say the brichas kehanim, despite the fact that I'm not a kohen, I listen to them and I would go up. So I would acquiesce, I would listen to the words of my friends and accord them the greatest respect. All my days, I was very careful with refraining from Lashon Hara. It never happened that I said a statement about somebody, and I needed to retract, to go back on my word, when I was confronted by that individual. 
We're speaking about a statement that perhaps can be interpreted negatively. Says Rabbi Yossi, it never happened that I had a negative intention, that it was in a negative context. My purpose was not to disparage somebody. Therefore, it never happened that I need to retract from what I said when confronted by that individual. Omar of Nachman. Hey, a reward is coming to me, the kindness of the this Shabbos, because I properly fulfilled the mitzvah of the three Sudis on Shabbos. Omra, you that hey, a reward is coming to me, the kindness of Yun Tfila, because I properly fulfilled Yun Tfila, Kavona, proper concentration during Davani. Omra, of Huna, Breda, Vishua, hey, Sili, the Loy Sagino, Daud Amis, Begilu Rosh, because I did not walk for Amis with a revealed head. Omar of Sheshes Tesili, the Kaimis Mitzvah Tfilin, because I fulfilled properly the Mitzvah Tfilin, as she says, he wouldn't walk for Amis without Tfilin on him. Omar of Nachman Tesili, the Kaimis Mitzvah Sitzis, because I properly fulfilled Mitzvah Sitzis, as she explains likewise, he wouldn't walk for Amis without wearing Sitzis. Continues the Gemara, Omar the Rav Yosef, the Rav Yosef Bray the Rabba. So Rav Yosef turned to the son of Rabba and he asked him, Avuch, your father, meaning Rabbah, but my Zohar it's fate. Which myth, with what was he extra careful? The first one explained that very often Hashem grants a person a specific mitzvah, which is unique and special to him. He's drawn to it, whether it's Torah, Tfilo, a different mitzvah, which is needed for the Tikkun, for the completion of his Tafkid, of his mission in this world. He's meant to be extra careful, meticulous with that mitzvah. So he asked the son of Rabbah, what was your father extra careful with? with mitzvah, which mitzvah did he, did he adopt? Omar lay bit tzitzis. It was with the mitzvah tzitzis that he was extra meticulous with. Says the Gemara, to illustrate this point, Yoy Machat, one day, have a kasolk with Darga. So the son of, of Rabba related the story. He said one day, he was going up, have a kasolk with Darga, he was going up the, the step or the ladder. If siklei chuta, so one of the strings of his film snapped off. He didn't come back down. He refused to descend until he repaired his tzitzis. She was very careful with the mitzvah of tzitzis. From Rabbi, Taisili, a reward is coming to me. Why? Because when I would see a Tzurban Rabbon, a young scholar, the Sholem Mesechta, who completed learning his Mesechta, I would make a day of festivity for the entire yeshiva. Rashi says Abayi was a Rosh Yeshiva. I would make a Yom Tov for all the Rabbonon to celebrate the Siyam of the Mesechta, and this would also inspire others to follow suit and learn and finish their Mesechta. Okay, time for a brief review of today's daf. We began with the Machlekes regarding the amount the number of sudas to be eaten on Shabbos, according to Rabbanan, there are three sudas according to Chitka, four meals. They both learn from the Pasuk regarding the man, which has the word Hayyayim repeated three times. According to Rabbanan, they correspond to the three meals, according to Chitka. Those are three sudas of the daytime, in addition to the previous nighttime suda. The Gemara brought a right from the Mishnah, which tells us that one saves the amount needed for three sudas from a fire. Apparently, only three sudas are necessary. Indeed, this Mishnah reflects the Rabbanan Shita. We had the Mishnah which told us that if one has the amount of 14 sudas, he may not take from the, uh, the fund, the weekly fund. Apparently it follows the Rabbanon's opinion because according to Rabbanon, we could work it out that 14 sudas is sufficient. The Gemara tells us that he's meant to eat the Matzah Shabbos meal on Shabbos. So therefore, 14 meals are sufficient for the entire week. According to Rabbi it doesn't work out. So Gemara says no. Even according to him, it works out because we're following Rabbi Kiva who says, one is meant to minimize his Shabbos expenditures and not to rely on handouts. So therefore he's meant to make do with whatever he has. We have the Mishnah which says that we're given three suits for Shabbos. Apparently he follows the Rabban and says the Gemara, we'll give him to Chitka. He's speaking about that he already had a suda with him. When he came over here, this gives him a total of four suits. The Gemara told us one may wash dishes if they are necessary for Shabbos. The Gemara told us that. One who is Mekayim, three Sudis on Shabbos properly, he is spared from the Chavli Mashiach, the of Gehenim, from the Goy Gemagoy. If one is Ma'ana, he gets a Shabbos, he pleasures a Shabbos, he gets the Nachla B'li Mitzram, unlimited inheritance, he is saved from Shubit Golis, and they grant him the desires of his heart. One who is Meshamer, the Shabbos Kilchase properly, he can get atonement even for Abay Dezara. We learned words of inspiration regarding advancing the Kabbalah Shabbos and delaying the conclusion of Shabbos about Kavanah and Tefillah, about beginning and ending one's day with, with Shachras and Minchan to wrap the entire day with Tefillah. We learned about Kedusha and Sneers of, of Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi. We learned about being careful with Tzitz and Tefillah and about Abai who made the Yom 
for the Siyam of the Masechta. 